We are leading undisputed, delving deeply into women's college basketball because it is the biggest story in sports, much bigger than the men's Final Four. We will get to the Warriors and to the Sixers and to the Clippers. We will get to the latest information on Rashi Rice and that situation. And what I thought was stunning news about a rework contract for Stefan Diggs. But first up, I am joined by Keyshawn Johnson and Paul Pierce to talk Caitlin Clark and Paige Beckers and Don Staley's 36-0 South Carolina team heavily favored to win it all. Morning, Key and Truth. Morning. How are you, gentlemen? All right, before we get to whether Caitlin Clark can lift Iowa past UConn and South Carolina and validate her all-time scoring record with the championship, Let's discuss why ticket prices are more than twice as high for the women's Final Four than the men's. Keyshawn, your thoughts on this development? Well, I think, it, first of all, it's a major entry. You got to start there. You got a couple stars that's playing. You got a South Carolina team that's undefeated. Undefeated. That won a championship. It almost seems <laughs> like it's off radar, yeah, right? right? Well, because they're so heavily favored. Yeah. So yeah. The, the, the matchup in the story now is Paige Becker versus Caitlin mm-hmm. Clark. Iowa versus UConn. Then the story will be, can whoever that is, assuming South Carolina doesn't get upset by the Cinderella story. I'm going to assume that does not happen. North Carolina State, that the story will then be, can Paige Becker or 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 Caitlin Clark beat an undefeated South Carolina team led by Don Staley, da-da-da-da. That'll be the whole story. If it is Caitlin versus South Carolina, that's going to be a bombshell rating. That that could break the the latest record. Yeah, that will break it. It it, it will be a bombshell watch, but also Gino versus Don Staley and their back and forward that they've had over the years. Just all those little storylines is why the intrigue is there. Plus... Co- men's college basketball, I don't even know who, who... I don't who, even know I don't one even know play. One, I, I know DJ Burns. I don't know one final, player. He's in the Final Four. That's about it. You know uh, Zach Eady, the producer, oh, Zach, player Zach. of the year. Okay, yeah, but, yeah, but he's so. kind of off radar. That's it. I, I couldn't you know, tell you right now. It's not flashy. I don't want to... I can't watch. I couldn't tell you. Hey, watch the, the star of the UConn men's team is the head coach, Dan yeah, Hurley, because he's it. a Hurley. Because he's Bobby Hurley's brother, right? And I have no idea about any of the dudes playing in I understand. And that's just the reality of it. It I, is. I have no interest in men's college basketball at the level where it's appointment. This, on the other hand, is appointment for me because if SC has somehow gotten to the Final Four, I would have figured out a way to get there to watch them play. You would have gone. No, yes, not okay. only because it's to my university, but I'm also interested in it. Well, you're interested in you know, one star who's yeah. just a freshman who that, looks like she is going to be something. There's nothing yeah. in men's college basketball. They're not talking about any of the players. They just don't. No. no. They don't talk about it. No. I, I watched the final A game, the LSU game, and Iowa game. I watched that like it was a national championship I, game. I, I understand. And you I'm did. like, and I'm thinking, can they get any better than this? And then I look up, and you got UConn, one of the most historic programs ever. With Paige, obviously, Becker, who's mm-hmm. who's had a great, great year, probably one of the top five players. I mean, she is a top five player. And then Caitlin with this historic run. And then I look on the other side, you got undefeated South Carolina, who got upset by Iowa a year ago. It's just too many story plots for me mm-hmm. not to watch this. I mean, obviously, I think we all want to see probably Iowa and... South Carolina, because what Iowa did to South Carolina last year, people don't even know if you do, they put them out the, uh, they ended their undefeated season. And so, however it goes, I mean, we, we overlook at NC, NC State, but they've been great. And so, either way, however it goes, I'm tuning in. I mean, there's just too many variables to this that I, that have great storylines, and the star power is there. You got LeBron talking about it. You, you know, that's gauging the interest. Yeah. Oh, the GOAT. He yeah, mentioned he it. Talking, he mentioned it. Wait, uh, the talking Pony about goat? the girl. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. He, he, he yeah. mentions it. Yeah. And so if I if I was available, I would fly out there now and get a ticket because it's just that interesting to me. I mean, me and Key right now talking about where we going to go watch this game. I, I heard you before the show, and I was like, man. I'm going to go watch the game. Man, think of what, what we're doing here. You're talking about where you're going to where watch I'm the going women's to watch game. The game. Right. Trying to figure it out. Trying to figure really? it out. Okay. And so that level of interest is not only myself, but people who have never even watched the girls' game that just only concentrate on the men's game are going to tune in. 
So they're constantly getting new followers. And a lot of this has to do with the teams. Caitlin Clark, obviously, what she's done to, to the game of college basketball, elevated to the level it's at with her performances. Uh, I'm excited. I, I mean, after their last game, I couldn't even breathe right. My adrenaline was flowing. <laughs> I was just like, there's more to go. And so I can't wait. $2,300 on an average for the women's game, twice as much as the men's game on the resale market. So if that's the case, then there's some tickets that's out there that's, you know, five and six. Yeah, you got that right. right. That, you know, yeah. Which right. is like, hmm? Interesting. Yeah. All right. Allow me to date myself, because I have been a women's basketball fan for a long, long time. I go clear back to what was called the WBL back in my days in Dallas, mm -hmm. just mainly because my next-door neighbor was named Nancy Lieberman. She was called Lady Magic. She, she was the first pick in the draft by the Dallas Diamonds, and she would go up against Machine Gun Molly Bolin and Carol Blaze Jowski, <laughs> and they could ball. Trust me, they could ball. And then I always watched the women, but there have been many, many years when the, the men were more interesting just because of the star power. And right. I know how we look at it. We want to project who's going to be big at the next level, who's going to dominate the next level, who's going to be impactful at the next level. So that's mainly why I watch the men, unless I have, as key points out, some rooting interest in Oklahoma or where I went to school at Vanderbilt or whatever. If you have some Kansas Jayhawk rooting interest, then that's a whole different ball game. All right. Then we get to star power and we get to Caitlin Clark. What is the intrigue with Caitlin Clark? I heard Gino talking yesterday about it takes personalities. Well, Caitlin does not have a huge personality right. to me. She's not a scintillating interview. She's not a quote unquote character. She's, she's a nice personality, but her interviews are pretty cut and dry. They're pretty cliche ridden. She says all the right things, but I can't remember anything she says because she's not a quote machine. Mm -hmm. So she's not doing it with her personality. Mm -hmm. And certainly she's not doing it with, with any storylines off the court. She's doing it with simply this. We've never seen anything like a female basketball player who goes Steph Curry because right. she is shooting jump shot logo threes. She, jump shots, not set shots, not feet on the floor. She shoots pure Paul Pierce style jump shots right. from deep. Remember, the court's the same, so she, right. she's shooting logo threes. And the other night, like you, I'm on the edge of my seat. We all picked LSU. But every time she went up, I'd say, that's a bad shot. Right. That's every a bad time. idea. And it went in. She made nine out of 20. And it took all nine of them to hold off an LSU team that I think, I, I still believe to this moment, LSU's just better than, than Iowa. But they didn't have one better player than that player right. who revolutionized college basketball doing that. And then, to your point, she's also got some John Stockton going on because mm -hmm. she mm -hmm. can flat pass the basketball. It's not sensational. It's not eye-popping. It's not behind the back, between the legs. But I think you guys sit back and say, that's legit. You yeah, know, she, she makes she, the right play every yeah, time. Yeah, right play and, and plays where you say, ooh, that, that's pretty special, you know, that to see that play and that bounce pass or that what, full court pass or whatever she pulls off, the combination of the logo threes plus the, the rare, it, to me, great passers come along like once a generation because you can't teach it, you can't coach it. You either see it or you don't see it. You can see it before it happens or you cannot. LeBron James is as gifted a passer as we've seen this side of Magic Johnson and John Stockton to me where you can't, nobody taught him, he just had it, and he honed it, obviously, but she's got it. Maybe not quite to the LeBron level, but she's got two things operating where she can make her teammates better, and her teammates, to me, are average at best. Yeah. Is that fair to say? I agree. Okay? Yeah. I think, yeah. All right. Okay, now let's get to tonight. This is a story, this, you, you can argue UConn's the program in women's college basketball, yes, right? Absolutely. And, uh, maybe we can. Uh, no, they are. They, they, they are. just are. Tennessee yeah. kind of. They had their. They've run. been in Tennessee for a while, and Tennessee fell off. Past some and, yeah. time. Yep. All right. So now we got <laughs> Caitlin Clark, Paige Beckers, UConn. Gino. Your prediction? Yeah, Gino. That's a good point too. Put yeah. Up. I'm. I'm gonna go with with Gino and, and Paige. Okay. Over over Iowa because. I just, it's just something about her, number one, that I like. And I, you liked her, how she played against I just USC. Like, I just like how she moved, and it's just her all-around game. It just, it's just something that I'm used to seeing, I guess. And, and I'm 
and they're good. He knows how to coach. Number one, he's been in this position. He's won 11 of them, I believe (laughs) that's the number, if I'm correct. Yeah. He's been in this position before, okay? He understands. She's back healthy. And I think for one... By the way, she was the player of the year when she was a freshman. freshman. Her team overall, much like LSU's team overall, Mm -hmm. is just better. I think they're just better than Iowa. He will not allow Caitlin Clark, in my opinion, to just be out there freelancing and doing what she wants like Kim Mulkey did. He saw that mistake that Kim made. Mm -hmm. He will not repeat that. That's Mm -hmm. just my little opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah, I like like UConn in this game. Okay, close. Yeah, I mean, it'll be... I don't think it'll be a blowout. They probably win by four or five. Key, I hear you and all. Like, I, I understand you got the history of UConn and... Page and all of this going for them, experience. They've been to the Final Four a couple years ago, but you got to understand, in the last 60-plus games that South Carolina's won, Caitlin Clark is the only one that beat them. I understand. Mm -hmm. They was in the national championship a year ago. Why aren't they the favorite? They've been there. I think they they experienced heartache. They beat LSU. So, uh, Iowa. They beat South Carolina. Mm-hmm. I you, just think you, this is a team of destiny. Oh, you, the, the Iowa. Iowa. Yeah. No, they're favored tonight, but they they're wouldn't the, be yeah. favored over South Carolina. Yeah, but they're the yeah. only team in yeah. two years to beat South Carolina. They are. They beat LSU, yep. the defending national champs. They did. And I, I bet you a lot of betters are putting money on UConn for the simple fact, the same reasons you're mm-hmm. saying. But I'm going to go Iowa for the simple fact that they've had heartache. They've been there. They experienced that loss. They battle tested, and they're in one, and they're in the middle of one of the, the greatest runs they are in college basketball yep. history. If they wind up beating LSU, they beat UConn and see South Carolina in the championship and beat them. Mm. What are we gonna be saying about Caitlin Clark? Mm. We we're gonna get to that later. Okay. Well, you know what we'd be saying. <laughs> we'd have to. <laughs> exactly. All right. So I went against Caitlin Clark in Iowa against LSU. Mm-hmm. And I, I still can't believe that Iowa won the game. And I still can't believe, as you pointed up, and I pointed out immediately the day after, right here sitting in this chair, that Kim Mulkey was so proud, haughty proud, that she said, you know what? We are the defending champs. We are LS freaking you. We don't bow down to anybody. We play defense the way we play defense. So I'm going to come out. I'm going to do it just like I would do it against any other best player on the other team. I'm going to put Haley Van Lith on her, our point guard on their point guard, and we'll just figure it out because we're better than they are, and we will dominate. And they dominated the boards. It was 54 to 36 on the backboards. Mm -hmm. And Haley Van Lith, who is now transferring, that's a whole other story. We'll get to that with LSU fan Lil Wayne in a little bit, unless you guys, if you want to throw something out now. (laughs) The point is, she could not guard Caitlin Clark. Mm -hmm. And Caitlin got up 23s and made nine of them, and that was the difference in the basketball game. Okay, so now I'm going to remind you one thing about Caitlin Clark. She is human, and she will every once in a while have one of those you know, two for 15 kind of games. And if she has one of those in the next two, if they get to two games, if she has one, if she goes two for 15 tonight, Paige Beckers will win this game Mm -hmm. because she is really good. And I remind everybody, Paige coming out of high school was the number one recruit that year. And Caitlin Clark was fourth on the list of recruits. So she's, she's come a long way. And yet, I love the way Paige competed against you guys the other night because she was, man, she will scratch and claw and fight and yeah. every every last ounce, whatever she's got tonight. And I think she will enjoy being the underdog for once in, in that role against Caitlin Clark. Okay, so clearly Iowa, to me, is a below-average team after Caitlin Clark. I can just say that. They because went to the national I know, championship because. Match. Kate Martin, to me, had the game of her life against LSU and had, what, she have 21, and she made that baseline fallaway jump shot in the fourth quarter. I said, I've never, I, I didn't think they she had that They battle-tested. They yep, battle-tested. They are battle-tested. They play great together, but it's all about Caitlin making them maximum better, right? Like, like that's she gets the max do. out that's of everybody. Do. Right, that's what she does best. That's, mm-hmm. that's maybe her number one strength. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I like them to get by UConn tonight, but I also think Gino will flip the script as you suggest. 
he's going to come out. How can you not? You have to dare those others mm -hmm. to beat you. you. You have to blitz Caitlyn. You have to trap Caitlyn. You have to double her as soon as she steps across half court. And as they do in the NBA, you take the ball out of her hands. Well, Kim Mulkey said after the game, well, everybody's tried that and nobody's succeeded at it. I, I don't know if they have. I, but but yeah. if, when you look at the game and you watch the game against LSU, LSU did not trap her. They did not blitz her. They did not, did not force her to her right. All they of her not. threes essentially lined up on the left-hand side. Yeah, and she's you know, a creator. She, it, she creates it. She it, doesn't it, need to catch it. She it, doesn't do Reggie it, Miller run or Steph her, run. You, know. you force her to the right, yeah. that's a different player. Everything that she's doing is pushed all the way to the left. And well, uh, but for some reason, they didn't push her to the right. They allowed her they, just they, to go to the but left. They did push her to the right, Key. But you know what she did when they pushed her to the right? She found a teammate for an assist. Yeah. When she drove down the right side, they they I saw the help. She drops it off to her other player at the free throw line for a jumper. When she drove right, she got to the basket. When she drove right, so she just picked them apart. It was like, all right, we're gonna send you right. Don't think that they didn't, but she generated 12 assists from that, whether it was getting it out, throwing it ahead, or driving right. Yeah, but you're so, not going to beat them with 12 assists. You're well, going to beat them 9 That's to minimum 12. 12 assists is minimum 24 points, d depending on how many of those yeah. assists or threes. Yeah. So she generated, no, she generated over like 60-something points. No, she so generated let's just say points. tonight she gets, she's not probably going to get 41. Most likely. Gino won't allow that, but if she does, my hat's off. She'll get 20-something points, but if she can manufacture 10 assists again, that'll be devastating. That'll be devastating because right. she's showing you she can still manufacture more points outside of her scoring. So that equals 40 points she mm -hmm. manufactured. Now, the, the, the role players, a lot of them, I saw them make moves off the dribble. I didn't really see them like, oh, no. No. here, here, get mm -hmm. this layup. A lot of the role players, they went baseline jumper. Uh, let me knock down this three. So they did a lot of their things one-on-one -on -one too. I think a lot of the uh, big players from Iowa benefited from that. The big, the big girl that was off the bench and, and mm -hmm. in and out, she she did. Oh, great! She, she, yeah. she did. Mm -hmm. You know, she ran the court. Yep. She knocked down some shots. But she the did. other two players, they kind of manufactured their own offense. They did. And so they're more than capable. They're not a number one seed for nothing, guys. This is more than the Caitlin Clark show. Okay. No, it, it, they, it, they, they beat South Carolina. You think just her? Last year, you think it was just her? No. They went to the national championship last year. By, it was by just the way, her. She, she had forty. She's so polarizing. You think she's the only one on the team? Well, that is true. But she had forty-one against South Carolina last year, and they yeah. won seventy-seven to seventy-three. Right. Okay. Well, she's gonna have to go through. She's gonna have to go through a little bit of a gauntlet to get well, that's to fact. where she wants to be. Remember that as one of the all-time greatest players to ever play whether it's men or women that is true. college basketball. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And if she eclipsed that goal in the end, then you certainly could, as you would say, crown her as such. Yeah. But if she does it for some reason, that conversation is going to be, oh, she scored a lot of points. Mm -hmm. Okay, that but is she true. never got a chance to well, finish still, the deal. Either way, she's in the conversation. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I guess. I'm sure there's going to be others out there on the women's side of basketball that will respect the fact that she's a scoring machine and a creator and all of those things. But you know, as I know, Paul, in the end, they look at that one thing when you're great. Did you win the chip? Fact. Right. Did you Fact. win the chip? In the 100%. end, 10 years from now, that's all you'll yeah, care about. that's all they care about 100%. is the chip. Mm -hmm. all right. and, and can she get through so, that gauntlet? I say she gets through tonight's gauntlet. I say she loses to South Carolina just the way she should have lost to LSU. The, again, the star of South Carolina is Dawn Staley to me, and you can make a case she's the best coach well, in women's college basketball. she shouldn't have lost to South yeah. Carolina because yeah. she beat them. Yeah. <laughs> to, I mean, I'm sorry, to I mean, to uh, Iowa. LSU. Iowa. Yeah, okay. She, she did. Yes, yeah. she did. All right. But the point is, you don't think South Carolina is going to be motivated off last year to get Absolutely. even, even though their team is not quite as good as it was last year, and they have struggled through this tournament. But Camila Cardoza is legit, serious, big, and I don't see how. Don thinks yeah. the team is better this year. Yeah, than it was I, I last don't. Year. I don't think it was. But or I mean, it hasn't. It hasn't played better than it yeah. did last year. It hasn't dominated. But it is a prohibitive favorite to win this tournament, and it will be favored fairly handily 
over Iowa if Iowa gets there. Yeah. And obviously if South Carolina gets there, and I'm pretty sure they will. But the point is, they're just going to be too big and physical for Iowa, but I thought LSU was. Right. I mean, how how do you lose the boards 54 to 36 and and Still win. and win the game? It's right. it's almost impossible. Well, Angel Reese couldn't even put the ball back and, in the rim either, though. And, and she, she heard was her, getting she, the boards. She turned. But she her couldn't ankle. even put it back because her ankle yeah. was trash. That is true. And she scored what in the second? I think she had two points in the second half after yeah. she turned her ankle. So that was a big factor. So I'm going to go. South Carolina wins it all. But I will be on the edge of my seat on Sunday if it's Iowa, South Carolina, and that will shatter the new ratings Absolutely. record, right? Yep, yep, I'm looking forward. All right. Thanks for watching, Undisputed fans. Do you want more highlights from the show? Make sure to click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from Undisputed.